This is The Killer Chronicles. In June of 2020, federal and state police in Massachusetts rounded up 31 people alleged to be connected to the NOB gang. It was the result of a multi-year RICO investigation involving crimes ranging from shootings targeting rival gang members to sex and drug trafficking, as well as inadvertently kidnapping a five-year-old girl who was in the backseat of a carjacked vehicle. The lead defendants and most famous targets included two well-known Boston-area rappers, G. Fredo and 7981 Cal. Their careers have continued to rise even as they've spent the last two years behind bars on pre-trial detention. But as we will explore, the feds have made this case about their lyrics just as much as the various crimes NOB has been linked to. In fact, prosecutors used both rappers' lyrics against them to argue that both men should be detained without bail, calling various lines and video scenes nothing more than thinly veiled attempts to intimidate potential snitches and obstruct justice. Cal and G. Fredo responded that their First Amendment rights are being threatened by overzealous law enforcement. Now, two years after charges were filed against the main group of 10 NOB members, things seem to be wrapping up. Five people have already pleaded guilty to racketeering and conspiracy charges, including G. Fredo. And Rule 11 hearings, where guilty pleas are likely to be entered, are scheduled in coming weeks for the remaining defendants. With the case potentially on the cusp of its end, we're taking a look at how we got here and what lies ahead. The NOB gang is based in Boston's Dorchester neighborhood. The name derives from an acronym that specifically refers to Norton, Olney, and Berry Streets, where the gang originated. But according to federal prosecutors, it has grown into a massive, sprawling criminal enterprise that's responsible for not only violent crimes, but maintaining illegal sources of income in Rhode Island, Maine, Connecticut, and of course, all across Massachusetts, especially Boston. NOB is closely associated with the older Boston-based Wendover gang, and rivals with the Cameron Street and Holmes Avenue gangs, among others. The gang is known around New England, but at the time of the indictments, rappers G. Fredo and 7981 Cal were gaining national notoriety for their music. And according to 7981 Cal's attorneys, he was in the middle of negotiating a record deal with Jay-Z's Rock Nation at the very time he was indicted and traveled back to Boston from Los Angeles to turn himself in. Their songs have racked up millions of views on YouTube, and new releases still gain instant popularity. They've also featured another rapper and co-defendant, Samael Mathieu, aka Hamathang, on several songs. Early into the prosecution, attorneys for the federal government successfully filed petitions to keep both G. Fredo and 7981Cal in jail on the basis that their lyrics and videos not only contained evidence of murder conspiracies and other crimes, but in some cases were actually attempts to dissuade witnesses from testifying against the gang. Both men have issued public statements in songs, interviews, and in Cal's case, a letter to a federal judge refuting the government's allegations. In one interview, G. Fredo said the case was, quote, just a bunch of false allegations. It's just a bunch of false allegations. I'll be home soon. I know I'm innocent. Though, as a part of his recent guilty plea, prosecutors agreed to seek a sentence between 5 and 13 years in federal prison. As early as 2017, a task force of police in Boston, Randolph, New Bedford, Staunton, Brockton, East Bridgewater, Taunton, and Cape Cod, as well as the Massachusetts State Police and federal agencies like the ATF and FBI, began investigating NOB. Prosecutors described four fatal shootings believed to be committed by NOB members, as well as more than a half dozen attempted murders, most of which involved shootings, but others that simply involved NOB members being stopped in rival gangs' territory and police theorizing that they were on their way to kill people. The shootings followed a similar MO, with the alleged perpetrators securing stolen cars and stashing them at various members' houses, either before or after, as well as NOB members often scouting the victims before the shooters moved in and opened fire. For example, on July 14th, 2019, 22-year-old Adelson Barbosa was shot and killed at Columbia Road and Staunton Street in Boston. Seven months later, his twin brother, Ailson Barbosa, was shot and killed in Brockton, Massachusetts. 
Both shootings are believed to be tied to the NOB, and prosecutors believe the Toyota used in Ailson's killing was stolen during an armed carjacking in Boston, and that NOB members David Rodriguez and Joseph J. Money Gomez later pawned jewelry that was stolen during the carjacking. Almost exactly a year before Ailson was killed, 20-year-old John Cologne was fatally shot in front of his home on Troll Street, allegedly by two NOB members who obscured their faces. G. Fredo later put out a song called They Don't Know, and prosecutors say the music video recreates Cologne's killing and contains references to it. Without specifying, the complaint alleges the video also includes the NOB member who rented the Chrysler Pacifica used by Cologne's killers. On September 5, 2017, an alleged Cameron Street gang member named A.J. Montero was getting his hair cut at a barbershop on Stoughton Street in Boston when two assailants drove up on a scooter and the person on the back of the scooter ran up and opened fire, killing Montero. An NOB member named Ricky Pina was on court order GPS monitoring at the time, and so authorities claimed they could prove he went back and forth in front of the barbershop then went to G. Fredo's nearby home and contacted at least one other NOB member, Alidio Barbosa, a.k.a. Ace Boogie. While we won't detail all of the attempted murder charges, a typical example occurred on August 12, 2018, when a man was shot in the hand by a 357 Magnum at a mobile gas station near the Quincy home of G. Fredo. Police are protecting the victim by referring to him as John Doe 6 in court records, and they say he was fronted drugs by NOB but failed to pay for them, which is why he was shot. Like in many of the other attempted murders, the victim was cased before the shooting, when a black Audi passed by him twice. The Audi was later located in Dorchester and contained a backpack, ammunition, cell phones, and a soda bottle with DNA linked to NOB member Wilson Dub Gonsalves Mendez. While all of these violent crimes and more were detailed in the complaint, the actual charges in subsequent indictments included one overarching racketeering count that included general allegations of murder, sex trafficking, and attempted murder predicates, but the additional counts were limited to distribution of fentanyl, crack cocaine, and other drugs, and possessing various firearms, mostly pistols. Overall, the evidence was based on vehicle searches, cell phone dumps, poll camera and in-person surveillance, jail call recordings, witness statements, and stop-and-frisk detentions, among other things. But for G. Fredo and 7981Cal, the case very quickly became about rap lyrics and rap videos, with a central focus on two songs in particular, Dead Ops Part 3 and the aptly titled song Rico, which was allegedly recorded weeks before the Rico case was filed, but contained such accurate details about it that a magistrate judge wrote that 7981Cal must be a clairvoyant. In addition to various gang indicia in Dead Ops Part 3, the feds pointed to a moment at the 1 minute 32 second mark, where a man with a blurred out face is seen sitting in a split screen. According to prosecutors, the man was a rival gangster who was pistol whipped and robbed by J Money and Malik Mook Hobson in a prior incident. The prosecution further alleged that 7981Cal and Dub confronted the victim in a state courthouse and secretly recorded the video of them shaking him down and threatening him against testifying as a means of further dissuading him. On top of that, the song contains the line, Bitch boy, yeah you put all them shots in my whip, but your man's got guy in the whip. Bitch boy, yeah you told on Jay Money and Mook, so you know when I catch you it's lit. Just remember my guy. They also took note that the song Die Holmes was filmed in rival Holmes Avenue gang territory and featured the gang's clothing being set on fire. While these prosecutors clearly analyzed numerous rap songs, their conclusions aren't always spot on. For example, one court filing by the U.S. Attorney's Office says the term lick is, quote, street slang for an act of gang violence, such as a murder for hire. When, it's almost universally known as a slang term for referencing a robbery or a theft. In the song, Rico, prosecutors contended that 7981Cal warned potential witnesses to, quote, stick to the G code, and bragged about violent conduct by NOB. Code. 
But in a letter to the U.S. Magistrate Judge Mary Page Kelly, Cal fired back, writing lengthy explanations for several of his supposedly incriminating rap lyrics. For instance, when he recited the line, four bodies in a month, bitch, what you know about 50 bands a week, Cal explained he was talking about a famous friend of his who slept with four models within a month and made $50,000 touring. When he warned about sticking to the G-code, Cal said he was talking about the, quote, guy code, and reminding others that it is considered bad manners to flirt with the girlfriends of people who are incarcerated and take advantage of their situation. When he rapped about, quote, going in for the kill when I ride, he said he was talking about doing his best to flow over a good beat. And when he referenced the acronym HSM, it stood for Hustle Stack Money, not Headshot Mafia, as prosecutors contended. Court papers also said that while Cal had previously been charged with kidnapping, assault, conspiracy to sell drugs, and cocaine trafficking, he has never been convicted of anything. Ultimately, Judge Kelly wrote that she would not consider the RICO lyrics when deciding whether to keep Cal in custody, and that she believed the evidence linking Cal to violent crimes was underwhelming, but added that it was clear he possessed several ounces of cocaine for distribution. She said she didn't see Cal as a potential flight risk, but was concerned that he would, quote, continue to promote the gang and further its goal of intimidating witnesses and obstructing justice. In other words, the dead ops video and the courthouse incident seem to have played a role in Kelly's decision to keep Cal behind bars, where he has remained since, despite several subsequent attempts to undo the detention order. Two months after the indictment, in August 2020, Cal's manager set up a three-way call between him, Cal, and G. Fredo, where Cal allegedly told G. Fredo, quote, I'm your ghostwriter and I do this shit for entertainment. You feel what I'm saying? referencing the Dead Ops Part 3 song. Once again, the feds called this an attempt to obscure G. Fredo's role as the writer and further obstruct justice. But in G. Fredo's case, prosecutors described him as a high-ranking NOB member who committed a murder as a juvenile and had continued to play an active role in violent and nonviolent crimes into adulthood. So the chances of him being released from jail before trial weren't very good to begin with, regardless of the content of his songs. This brings us to the present day, where everyone has either pleaded guilty to a federal offense or two, or seems poised to. Joshua Trouble Teixeira pleaded guilty to racketeering and drug conspiracy in March, and faces up to 20 years. Jay Money pleaded guilty to racketeering and gun possession, and also faces up to 20 years. Hamathang pleaded guilty to racketeering and conspiracy to distribute controlled substances, which carries a minimum of five and a maximum of 40 years. Darius Trigatre Bass pleaded guilty to racketeering and also faces a max of 20 years. And as previously mentioned, G. Fredo took a plea deal to racketeering and controlled substances distribution and faces up to 20 years. But in all of these cases, the feds have agreed to request less than the maximum, though it's still technically possible that a judge will go off the rails and throw the book at them. On top of all of that, 7981 Cal, Ricky Blake Pina, Dub, Damian Cortez, and David Rodriguez all have pending Rule 11 hearings before U.S. District Judge Leo Sorokin, where it is expected that they will plead guilty to something. Details of those potential plea deals aren't publicly available at the time of this recording, but the situation is so fluid that it's very possible new information will surface quickly. So, we will continue to update the bio and may post a short follow-up when the case is finalized. Also, it is entirely possible that any of these pending defendants will back out of their change of plea hearings and choose instead to go to trial, which had been tentatively scheduled to happen in August. At any rate, regardless of any sentences handed down in the near future, Cal and G. Freda will both receive credit for the two years they've spent behind bars, and will likely continue to put music out in some form or fashion, even behind bars. On a final note, it seems worth mentioning that just two months ago, the feds hit one of NOB's biggest rivals, the Cameron Street Gang with a similar RICO indictment, charging 19 members with a total of 37 counts of various forms of drug distribution, gun possession, and an overarching racketeering conspiracy. In the indictment, 
Prosecutors wrote that members of the gang refer to themselves as the body bag boys and cite attempted murders targeting NOB members, as well as robberies, carjackings, and other forms of violence. That case is still in its early stages, and it will probably be years before we see whether the defendants decide to take deals or to take their cases before a jury. <laughs> 